Hello and welcome to today's webinar on CAP's new ad placement guidance. Andy from CAP's regulatory policy team will be talking you through the guidance which covers placement of age-restricted ads in all non-broadcast media. After Andy's presentation there will be some time for questions. You can send these in via the chat function as the presentation is being delivered but please be aware we will only be answering them at the end. This is CAP's first ever webinar and we hope to make them a permanent setup in our events and training offering. Therefore, we would welcome any feedback on your experience today and also on any other topics you would like to see covered by an interactive webinar such as this. We'll be sending out a survey in the next few days and we hope you can find five minutes to fill it in for us. Once again, thanks for joining us and I'll now hand you over to Andy. Thanks very much, Ella, and good afternoon, everybody. The CAP code is a code full of rules on placement and the content of advertising. Placement is a very, very powerful tool, and particularly for advertisers in sensitive sectors and sensitive product categories, to allow them to put their ads out there without putting them to audiences or segments of an audience for which they might be inappropriate. The guidance that we've created and published very recently responds to concerns um, from our recent HFSS consultation um, about targeting of ads. The HFSS consultation ran throughout 2016 um, and concerned the question of whether foods high in fat, salt and sugar should be advertised to children. Those rules, new rules came in or were announced um, in December last year um, and will come in shortly. However, this guidance reflects um, rulings from the gambling and alcohol sectors who have a similar media placement restriction. Those rulings uh, from the ASA um, are effectively the established policy. This guidance reflects that policy and doesn't seem to seek to make new policy. Um, however, what it does seek to do is create a framework so that you can understand more freely um, how uh, you should be placing your ads. Um, I should add that we have um, more guidance coming very shortly um, on a very specific element of this which sort of feeds off the guidance that we have here today um, and that is guidance on interest-based targeting in online platforms such as social media um, and social networking. Um, I'll explain more about that but effectively it's about how you can use interest-based factors to beef up the effectiveness of your targeting and exclude interest groups um, which are likely um, to denote for instance children um, or under 18s dependent upon the restriction you're looking at. In terms of the scope of the guidance the main focus is on those areas which are the directly covered areas are HFSS products, lotteries, gambling, alcohol um, and e-cigarettes. Um, I should say the HFSS restriction comes in in July, so that's when this uh, guidance will become relevant for HFSS um, advertisers. However, the guidance might also be relevant in other instances. The code has rules which include um, product and content-based restrictions, so effectively the ASA will look as to whether a medicines advertisement has been addressed um, to under 18s, something which is prohibited by the code. That will be a balance of both both product, uh, sorry, of both uh, placement um, and uh, content um, in terms of their assessment. So it's there for advertisers um, to use this guidance in terms of the placement aspect to attempt to comply with those rules. At the same time, there are going to be issues where age inappropriate content um, is a question. So that could be an ad for any product, but if it features something, for instance, which is violent, um, of a sexual nature, scary and so forth, um, there might be a need to exclude that content um, from being viewed by certain audiences. This guidance um, gives uh, some steer as to how that might work. So such advertisers um, might also um, benefit from using it in those respects. So in terms of media placement restrictions, uh, the, the basic formula, we have the alcohol version here, and the basic formula is the same. Um, I, you should note um, that the gambling uh, rule, for various reasons, has a different um, uh, 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 approach in terms of its wording. It doesn't refer to the 25%, the second bullet um, on your list there. Um, however, the ASA's application of the rule um, is the same. Effectively, um, the test that you must satisfy is that the ad marketing communication must not be directed at people under, it could be 16, 18 in this case, um, through the selection of media or the context. Uh, context. Um, in addition to that, in certain instances, um, this ancillary point comes in, and that is that no medium um, should be used to advertise alcoholic drinks, whatever the other product is, um, if more than 25% of its audience is under 18. 
In terms of what that actually means in practice, breaking it down, there are basically three criteria um, or three points, three requirements that the, the rules place um, on, on advertisers. Firstly, um, there should be no placement in media that is for a protected age category. And by for, we mean something that is overtly um, and uncontentiously a space, uh, a media platform which is designed um, for a particular group. An example of that in traditional media would be a children's magazine. It's explicit that a magazine um, for younger children um, on cartoons or something like that is intended for that group. It is inappropriate uh, in, in any circumstance to place age, restric age restricted products in that medium. Um, one of the, the, the examples uh, that the ASA uh, might take when making that distinction is for instance, um, let's use another example, a gaming website that explicitly states that it is a site designed uh, say for under 12s. The intention of that media, uh, the intended audience of that media is children, um, therefore no placement is permitted. Um, in other media, so this is media of a more general appeal, media which might have a, a broad audience range that encompasses children as well, um, the ASA used that second criterion from the previous um, slide, this idea that 25%, um, no more than 25% um, of the audience um, should be under the protected group, under 16, under 18. Um, etc. And in these instances, the advertiser is going to have to provide data to demonstrate that they have complied. I will give uh, more insight into that um, shortly as we have a slide on it coming up. Um, the third type of targeting is where um, the advertisers are using data. So this might be um, in offline media, the use of a marketing list to send direct mailing. In online media, um, going back to the, the, my comments on the, the slide before, it might be using account data off social network uh, platforms in order to shape and to create an audience for your marketing communication. In that instance, the ASA is going to expect you've done everything possible um, to remove or avoid the targeting of the group protected by the particular rule. Further on what the ASA is likely to expect, the code operates on a reverse burden of proof. Effectively, you are required to demonstrate to the ASA that you have satisfied the must not be directed at test. Um, in terms of that, our advice and on process would be firstly that you understand the basics of whether you are advertising an age-restricted product and um, that should be straightforward in terms of what most um, companies understand in terms of their business and uh, their business process their proposition to what they're actually selling um, but be careful there are some advertisements in instance advertisements featuring um, alcoholic products that might not be for alcoholic products that are also subject to the rules and the key is that the ASA is going to expect that before you put your uh, marketing communication out there that you've assessed um, the likely audience and um, this is obviously something which marketers would want to do anyway in terms of targeting particular demographics particular groups but the age category is crucial it's important to say that you've assessed the audience that you are targeting and also identified those that you want and um, then Basically, to, to support that decision, to support where you've got to with your assessment, you need to find audience data, if it is available, um, to justify um, and satisfy, uh, for instance, the 25% criterion. Alternatively, if you're using marketing lists or targeting criteria, you need to demonstrate to the ASA, for example, that you have removed anyone who is under 18 from a marketing list, or that you have used targeting criteria, which are likely to relate to people who are of age to receive marketing communication over 18, etc., or and or people who uh, in, in criteria which do not indicate um, that children uh, are, are likely the likely recipients. Just moving briefly on to audience data. This is a question that we get asked quite um, significantly. We have a 25% criterion in written into these rules. Um, how, what type of audience data, especially in the, the non-broadcast media where there is no uh, barb system, the system used on television um, to, to measure audience. Um, this graphic hopefully gives you um, an idea based on where the ASA um, has been with this. If you have robust audience data um, from, for instance, uh, an industry uh, acknowledged uh, measurement scheme and so forth, that is effectively your golden ticket. As long as that shows that the child or the under 18's audience is below 25%, um, that, that is going to be a strong argument to the ASA to satisfy the must not be directed at um, test. Um, where that data is incomplete or where that data is perhaps not completely robust, um, it's then for the advertiser to assemble effectively a, a composite of different types of data. They might take 
partial data and infer that that data, um, that audience data, for instance, uh, I think the example would be um, that on a, an open access video sharing platform, if you had some data about signed in users, um, you could infer as long as you had something else to support it, that that was representative of all users. So as long as, again, that, that partial data shows under 25, that might be enough to satisfy the ASA. Where there's little or no data, then you run a serious risk. The ASA, obviously, if you don't have the data, the ASA doesn't have the data either. It then has to rest um, on effectively subjective assessment, subjective judgment. They think that the content is likely to have an audience um, of under 16s, under 18s, um, then there is a significant risk um, that they will find that you haven't done enough to satisfy that must not be directed at test. And now we have some uh, examples. Um, from the offline media, um, magazine and press uh, as advertising media have pretty well established um, audience measurement circulation figures. So it's a simple question of meeting or demonstrated to the ASA that you meet um, the 25% threshold. Outdoor advertising in circulars, circulars like supermarket door drops, um, they're a different type of example. These are inherently generally targeted at the population. Um, the ASA's view of this is that as the population uh, for under 18 is uh, 21% um, and for obviously under 16 is less than that, that if you're targeting generally, you're not falling foul of the uh, the test of not direct or not directing um, the communication um, at the, the, the protected group. There is an exception to that which is important, um, and that is schools. The ASA has ruled um, that it would consider ads for restricted products appearing within 100 metres to be potentially problematic. Direct mailings are an example where the marketer effectively creates their audience through a mailing list. That mailing list, of course, has information and data on it in relation um, to the individuals they wish to target. The ASA's view um, is that if there is even one individual within the protected category, on that mailing list that should have been removed, i.e. that you knew they were of the of the inappropriate age, um, that that um, would result in an upheld adjudication. Some examples um, from the online sphere. Um, firstly, with Facebook, this is an example of where Facebook's advertising platform allows the use of interest-based factors and account data to effectively target groups who are more likely to be of age because of their interests uh, and things that they like and so forth, and then to not target groups who have interests which are likely to indicate that they are um, younger um, than the, the protected age categories. Of course, you have to remember that platforms like Facebook, as well as providing opportunities to advertise, they also provide um, advertisers um, with actual accounts with space that is under their control that they can use. In these instances, we have another example of Facebook and Twitter. Um, it's important here to use those mechanisms to appropriately target your, your content. So, for example, um, Facebook allows um, content uh, or posts to be targeted away um, from people who are not of age to view them. Um, Twitter doesn't, so strangely we go back to the, the, the original test um, at 25%. Basically, is if you're sending it to all your followers, are all your followers, when you check them as an audience, um, are is the number that are under um, 18, under 16, less than 25%. That's what the ASA is going to expect. Finally, in summary, um, don't direct age inappropriate ads at protected groups under the media placement restrictions. The key is that you're going to have to satisfy the ASA if challenged uh, through a complaint that you've taken the appropriate steps. Data is crucial, it is the golden ticket, um, and at the same time it's crucial to ensure that where you're using marketing lists, where you're creating your audience through data, that you're managing that appropriately um, and you're sorting your targeting criteria um, to ensure that groups, are the, well to ensure that you have done as, as much as you possibly can to exclude the group that's protected by the restrictions. Finally, you have to know that there are risks inherent where the data is not good, there are risks inherent where you have no data. Um, it's going to be subjective, um, so there is a real onus to attempt to put together the best possible picture of the audience and hold that for the purposes of the ASA should they receive a complaint. Thanks Andy. So uh, we've got some time now for questions. Um, firstly, you talked about the new HFSS rules coming into effect in July. Can you just talk a bit more about the effect of these? Yes. Um, in December, CAP announced new rules in the non-broadcast media um, for foods high in fat, salt and sugar, uh, basically that they shouldn't be advertised um, at under 16s. Um, this responds to quite considerable ongoing concerns over public health, um, childhood diet and the impact that that has in the longer term on obesity rates and the costs to healthcare services um, and the economy. Um, 
the impact of these changes is quite considerable. For the first time in non-broadcast, we're going to see rules um, similar to those which have been in place in broadcast for the past 10 years, effectively a restriction on where you can put ads. Um, at the same time, however, um, CAP has amended existing content restrictions, and um, that's restrictions on what can go in ads. So effectively, if you've, if you've met the requirements of the media placement restriction, you still have to ensure that ads placed appropriately um, meet content restrictions, um, have amended those to basically focus on H HFSS product advertising. Previously, they applied to all food and drinks products where the content of the ads was directed at under 12s. Um, that's been rolled back to apply focus or to focus on under, uh, sorry, to focus on HFSS products only. So this is a greater opportunity um, for non-HFSS uh, products to use promotions, licensed characters and celebrities popular with children uh, in their marketing campaigns in the non-broadcast media, something they weren't allowed to do previously, but at the same time, HFSS campaigns, uh, you have to be careful once you've met the placement restriction um, and you've got the placement aspect of it right, there are still other restrictions in place as well. Um, CAP have been doing quite a lot of work um, recently uh, to assist the industry in coming uh, to terms with the new um, restrictions. Um, I can only advise you to, to get onto the CAP website, um, the asa.org.uk, uh, and then follow the links to the CAP uh, part of that site um, and look for the various bits of advice we have on HFSS uh, and also um, the advice which is available from the CAP copy advice team who can do bespoke um, advice uh, on your ad copy um, and turn that round for free in about 24 hours. Um, so there are big changes, but we're hoping to help and food advertisers to ensure that they get it right when the rules come into force um, from the 1st of July this year. And thinking practically, what are the steps that advertisers should go through when they're placing their ads? I, I, well, obviously all things being equal, I, I'm not a marketer, I, I am a regulator, but to me this is a question of, uh, of business process. Um, the code requires that advertisers are responsible, um, that they are legal, decent, honest and truthful. So I think it's beholden upon advertisers in sensitive sectors and I, I think on the most part we, we see that these responsibilities are, are well taken um, and most of the advertising that you produce is is compliant but it's res the responsibility of advertisers to ensure that they have the necessary processes in place um, to ensure that they are um, they are assessing their audience both in terms of who they want to target and who they shouldn't be targeting and effectively creating an audit trail to demonstrate um, where, uh, how they have targeted their, their, or their audience which they want to direct their ads at and how they have effectively excluded um, protected um, groups. I, I think that you know, in terms of data, data is obviously a, a very important. Um, the industry has, uh, in terms of its targeting, the ava available a lot of data um, in terms of, uh, of industry standard measurements and so forth. And that is the type of thing that we want to see um, advertisers relying on um, to create a, a picture of what their audience is likely to be and obviously taking action where they find instances uh, that the 25% um, threshold has been uh, uh, always likely to be broken. At the end, it comes down to risk. If you're very confident that your audience is entirely adult, um, then you're in a, a safe space. Um, if you're not, um, you take on risk and it's about assembling the best possible case should the ASA ever investigate to persuade them that they, uh, that you, sorry, have satisfied um, your responsibilities under the code. Thanks, Andy. Um, and talking about uh, sort of audience data, um, obviously very few non-broadcast media have the capacity for a really accurate audience measurement. So what are the sort of expectations of the ASA around this and can you tell advertisers a bit more of an idea of the kind of things they'll be expected to provide? Yeah, no, it's a very good point. I think it's something which which came through quite strongly um, in, in, from food uh, advertisers and, and the food industry in general in response to the HFSS consultation last year. Um, I think firstly that there are um, sources. I've just mentioned um, industry accepted metrics. Um, the ASA is going to expect that you provide as good a data as you can. Um, it can't ever meet the, the sort of the bar of gold standard of having such a, a, an accurate, um, almost population um, level measurement. But the industry accepted standards are what you use to base um, ad sales, the price of ad space on. So they are quite good indications. Um, they're a, good, a very good starting place. Um, we appreciate that that doesn't apply um, across all media. 
So it comes back to what I, I noted on the, the slide um, about trying to, to put together as best a composite um, of, of different sources um, to support your decision in terms of targeting. I mean, one example the essay has ruled on um, is an instance where a piece of content went out on, a, a, on an open to view and um, video sharing platform. The, the advertiser had data for those users, the minority of users that were signed in to that platform, so they could assess their age um, from account data. Um, and the advertiser effectively made a case that that sample was representative of the wider whole. Um, and obviously, there is then the capacity to rely on other things. My advice would be to think about each individual communication that you're, you're sending out per different um, uh, media platform and what you can say you know, almost down to the bullet points. As many bullet points as you can get on there with legitimate points in defense of your uh, targeting decision, so using data to start with, but then other things you might, for instance, um, find particular opinions in terms of, uh, you know, influencer marketing. What What's the, the opinion of a particular influencers, uh, you know, through agencies and, and, and brokers, etc. What is the, the opinion of their likely audience? Are there any sort of demo, wider demographic uh, pieces of information that you can use? Are there similar um, uh, uh, marketing channels, influencers, uh, YouTube channels, etc., that you can rely on to draw parallels between where you're putting your advertisement and, and, and another piece of content um, which has a, or like, is likely to have a similar audience where you actually have more information on that audience. So what I would stress is basically trying to build that list of, of arguments for each of the um, the ads that you put out there to ensure um, that you have a strong and robust case as possible when the ASA, oh, well not when, but hopefully if and hopefully never, um, the ASA uh, comes out uh, with, with a complaint and asks you to explain your choices in terms of targeting. And what if there isn't any usable data on audience? Um, well, it comes down basically to risk. Um, it, I, I spoke before about your, your business processes. Um, if you've got a strong case in terms of where you're putting your ads, in terms of having audience data, then you know, you're in a, a strong position to defend yourself um, against a complaint. If you don't have that data, then you are going to run an inherent risk. Um, and that is a, a decision um, that businesses have to take before, before they advertise as to whether they want to run that risk. Um, simply put, where there is no audience data, there is no reference point, the ASA, it then opens it for the ASA um, to make a subjective decision. If you're making a subjective decision, um, unless you're absolutely certain that that piece of content could never reasonably be regarded to appeal to children, so for instance, no cartoon characters, no licensed characters, no film stars, etc., and that type of thing, characters from movies and so forth, um, unless you've got the absolute surety in your own mind that subjectively it's impossible for someone to say that it appealed to children, you're always going to open uh, yourself to the risk that the ASA might disagree with that and, and uphold um, the complaint. And uh, on social media, obviously, big news space for advertisers, it's a bit more uncertain in, in this area. Can you say a bit more about what advertisers should be doing on social media and whether there are any more resources available to them? Yes, uh, and again, I shall use this opportunity to uh, to plug the forthcoming interest-based um, targeting work that we're doing. Um, this is another piece of guidance uh, which will effectively sit alongside this one. Um, and the intention, really simply, is to basically give another layer of assurity to advertisers using platforms that allow you to target on the base a basis of interest-based factors, on the basis of people's usage within those platforms, um, to ensure that you're looking uh, for, for characteristics and criteria which are um, of an adult audience and not a child uh, or under 18 audience, or under 16, dependent on the rule. The ASA um, is going to is basically going to look at advertisers' um, uh, efforts in this regard, um, and they're going to make a judgment. And it's going to come down to what we, we talked about before in terms of the the expectation, the 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 onus on advertisers, and um, to say that they've done everything that they reasonably could to target the people who should receive the ads over 18s, over 16s, and to not target or exclude um, those under 18, under 16, dependent upon the restriction. And in your uh, presentation, you said uh, advertisers should hold audience data where it's available. Obviously, you also mentioned there's no barb data and, and things like that available for non-broadcast. So uh, where, where should advertisers get this audience data from? Um, the ASA hasn't been prescriptive um, in this regard. Um, effectively, 
there are, uh, for example, the Audit Bureau circulations for press. Um, I know the Cinema Advertising Association has um, an approach to measuring audience in relation to cinema advertising. Um, online, there are a variety of metrics. There's proprietary data held, for instance, by websites themselves, the platforms, the media owner um, themselves. Um, there is, uh, uh, as well, the account data held by social network platforms on age groups uh, and so forth, uh, sorry, on ages and so forth. Um, at the same time, um, there are third-party data uh, providers. Um, I don't think we're, we're giving a, a particular shout out to various uh, um, uh, corporate uh, organisations, but basically, media measurement um, companies do measure online audience. I appreciate that with Barb, it's all in one place. In the, uh, the non-broadcast media, it's a bit more sort of spread out and a bit more diffuse. Um, I think that there is a need, um, and it, it, you know, it is an onus, it's a requirement of the code for, for advertisers looking to use certain media platforms to go out there and see what is available. Uh, the guidance includes. Um, in its uh, uh, final uh, um, uh, section and annex, um, a list of useful, well, hopefully useful links um, to get you set off with uh, different sources of information data. Um, it's not by any means a complete list, um, but hopefully it, it's useful for, for marketers um, to give them an idea of where they need to go. But the key thing is you need to get hold of, of usable data. The ASA will assess that data, and as long as it has a reasonable level of robustness and legitimacy, um, and as long as you've used it appropriately, um, that's a very good basis upon which to make your decision to target an ad. Thanks, Andy. So um, if anyone has any more questions, please do send them in because we will try and, and wrap up now. Um, so just a final word from Andy. Can you just let everybody know where obviously the guidance we've been talking about today will be available? Um, on asa.org.uk, um, the advice and resources tab, um, and then if you search for media placement restrictions, protecting children and young people, which is the title of the guidance, um, that guidance will be there. Um, at the same time, um, when we publish the interest-based guidance, uh, interest-based targeting guidance, sorry, next month, that will also be there. I, I can't um, encourage you enough to go and look at the, the resources section. There's a lot of guidance, uh, a lot of uh, information and articles on a whole variety of topics, not just placement. Um, and obviously, that links in quite heavily with what our copy advice team do. Their details are also on the website where you can get uh, bespoke advice on your campaigns um, free and uh, with a 24-hour turnaround in the vast majority of instances. Thanks, Andy. Final question. Um, if sort of childish characters and, um, you know, char characters from films, etc., are shown in marketing materials, but these marketing materials can only be viewed by over 18s, is this okay? That, that is a question which goes in certain respects wider than um, than just placement restrictions. Um, the rules on gambling um, and alcohol have very specific, um, or there are additional rules about the appeal um, of characters. So um, using a, a, a basically a character that is pretty solely focused um, or, or likely to appeal to children is still likely to be a problem. Thanks, Andy. So that concludes the end of today's webinar. We uh, hope you found this useful. And again, we apologize for any sound issues. Uh, we did do a test run through of, of this beforehand, which has been recorded. So hopefully we'll send that to you and the quality will be a bit better. Um, please do look out for the feedback survey we'll be sending in the next few days. Um, and we do hope you will join us for another webinar again soon. Um, in the meantime, for further information on the advice and training CAP offers, including face-to-face -face seminars, online training, and our copy advice service, please visit our website or contact events at cap.org. UK, and obviously on the website you can find the guidance that we've been talking about today as well. So thank you everyone.